Oh, hello, Dragonfly Swarm. Ugh, where do we start? Yes, I know what the thumbnail says, and no, it was not a joke. Shinyan is a longtime questionable character in Genshin that much of the player base has deemed as a pretty weak character in terms of gameplay power, and they're not really wrong. With her prominent and very awkward split scaling between defense based shields and attack based everything else, Shinyan has thrown a lot of people, myself included, through a loop for a long time. But with recent characters and new gear being released since the slowdown of Inazuma's 8 patch arc, I genuinely think Shinyan's newfound potential has kind of snuck up on people. No, she's by absolutely no means an aggressively strong 4-star like Xiang Ling, Bennett, etc., but as I found out in making this guide, she's gotten stronger than what the general player base assumes. So, in today's video, I'm gonna take a humble attempt at dusting off your Shinyan with this guide video, in which I'll discuss everything you need to know in order to make her a quite respectable 4-star character in 2.8 Genshin Impact. From discussing her kit details, to her constellation value, to her best gear, and her wide variety of team comping strategies. <clears throat> Let's kick off this guide with Shinyan's abilities, and more specifically, her attack talent. Fun fact, Shinyan's normal attack sequences have some of the highest scaling of any 4-star Claymore user, and thanks to the respectable scaling on her charged attacks, she has some of the highest charge attack DPS of any 4-star Claymore user as well. And this strength is even more impressive when you realize that Shinyan has one of the highest base attacks of any 4-star in the game. And in general, especially at C1 and C6, you're gonna squeeze the best damage out of using her charged attacks, but there are a small handful of rotation combos that incorporate her normal attacks attacks here and there. Shinyan's elemental skill will cause her to swing her guitar for an AoE slash of pyro damage that will generate a shield with added effects based on how many enemies her guitar hits. Hitting 0 or 1 enemies grants a basic low scaling shield, and hitting 2 enemies grants a stronger shield, and hitting 3 enemies grants a level 3 shield and will cause the shield to occasionally pulse with AoE pyro damage for its entire duration. It is important to note though that with her first ascension passive, it actually will only require her to hit 2 enemies for her level 3 shield and 1 enemy for her level 2 shield. Now, now, uh, the shield's damage absorption does scale entirely off of Shinyan's defense, which unfortunately begins the discussion about her split scaling. By investing into the strength of her shield with defense stats, you'd be heavily cutting into her high damage potential because everything else in her kit scales with attack, not defense. But the bigger problem here is that quite a bit of Shinyan's self-sufficiency is reliant on this shield being active. For example, her fourth ascension passive grants a 15% physical damage bonus to anyone protected by her shield, including herself. So if the shield breaks easily, she or the physical carry she's supporting won't have this bonus or the shield's other bonuses, which, you know, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> Therefore, until you've gathered some of her constellations, and even then, there's not a whole lot you can do to mitigate this issue, but luckily losing out on her A4 passive for a portion of your rotation isn't really the end of the world, especially not with the benefits of things like her C2 and her C4, which in their own ways work around this issue, but I'll talk about those constellations in a minute. Shinyan's Burst is a crazy ability that causes her to jam out, which creates an instance of extremely high physical damage in the area surrounding her, followed shortly by two seconds of overtime pyro damage. The physical damage scaling on this ability is absurdly high, making Shinyan an amazing burst support and main DPS simply by adding a large portion of damage to her own contribution in the team she's in. The burst has a 60 energy cost and a 15 second cooldown, so it's relatively spammable but also kinda designed in a way that incentivizes saving the burst for high priority enemies or large vulnerable groups of enemies rather than just blindly spamming it every time it's off cooldown. In general, the way you're gonna want to use all of these abilities will be the same whether your Shinyan is the carry or she's enabling the carry, and although there are some blatant issues with her base kit that will haunt her forever unless they tweak them, there are workarounds to the issues that can allow Shinyan to still be a respectable character, especially when you look at all the new gear and teams she's gained access to over Inazuma's 8 patch lifespan. So to sum up her kit with talent priority, as a main DPS, you'll want to prioritize leveling her attack talent first, her burst second, then her skill last, and as a support slash sub carry, you'll want to level her burst first, her skill second, and attack talent last. But this isn't really an excuse to ignore any of her talents because the unfortunate truth, again, is that in order to get to a point where you can enjoy her, you'll have to put some amount of resources into all of these talents. Attacks for consistent damage, skill for self-sufficiency, and burst for a huge spike in her damage contribution. Now then, as for Shinyan's constellations, for better or for worse, a lot of her potential is locked behind them. The good thing about that is that there are some improvements to her base kit as well as generally large total damage increases that you'll get with these constellations, but the bad news about that is that if you don't have most or any of them, Shinyan
Shenyan will feel significantly less streamlined. At C1, scoring critical hits grants Shenyan an attack speed bonus that does apply to her charged attacks, which will ease some of the clunkiness she suffered from otherwise. And actually, in tandem with C2, it will allow her to consistently proc this passive for her on field time. What is her C2? Her C2 literally just causes the physical damage part of her burst to permanently have a 100% crit rate, meaning she will always proc C1 when she bursts, and it allows her to stack entirely into crit damage as a burst support for absolutely ridiculous raw physical damage every time she bursts. But even as a main DPS, she'll be able to get away with less crit rate than usual thanks to this constellation, and also with this constellation, casting her burst will now form a level 3 version of her shield, which, you know, is valuable all around since it can help her to maintain the uptime of her very important shield. C3 is a pretty important constellation for her skill because it gives you a free boost to her shield's defense scaling as well as extra damage on the initial skill cast. And do note that the extra 3 levels does benefit the shield created by her C2, if that wasn't apparent. C4 will decrease the physical resistance of enemies hit by her initial skill damage by 15% for 12 seconds, and unlike her A4 bonus, this is actually not tied to her shield's uptime, so even if your shield breaks like immediately, the enemy's physical resistance will stay shredded for the full 12 seconds. This also further solidifies the incentive to always use her skill before her burst, because otherwise you're just going to miss out on a notable damage spike. And speaking of bursts, C5, as you might imagine, is fantastic for Shinyan, because her burst talent scales very well with each level, and the extra damage this constellation provides in tandem with her C2 is just ridiculous. <laughs> and finally, C6 is actually a, a really weird one. The official description says blah blah blah, charge attack stamina cost reduction, which you know, it is nice, don't get me wrong. But the weird part is that it says Shinyan's charge attacks gain an attack bonus equal to 50% of her defense. But what this constellation actually does is it just straight up converts 50% of her total defense into attack and slaps it onto her total attack. Which means that during her charge attacks and for a brief moment after her charge attack ends, her entire kit has access to this damage increase. Thus creating a new combo for Shinyan that will, once again, massively benefit her burst damage, in which you use her skill on the enemy, then perform a quick charge attack cancel straight into her burst so that its physical damage is benefiting from her A4 passive, her C4 passive, and now the extra flat attack that her C6 passive gives. Do keep in mind that this constellation isn't really a fix to her split scaling though, because the conversion is only 50% of her defense, and it also only benefits her for a very short time after she stops charge attacking. So you should consider this defense translation more of a nice bonus instead of a full-on incentive to run defense stats, but it's still a significant damage increase in general. So yeah, overall, Shinyan's highest potential is quite heavily dependent on her constellations, and although I would say C2 is the best constellation, all of them are good, and the difference between, for example, a C2 Shinyan and a C6 Shinyan is still pretty large. Anyways, moving on to some of the fresh topics, aka Shinyan's best gear, aka let's start with artifacts. Shinyan's got two overarching playstyles that I wanted to cover in this video, those being physical Shinyan and the uh, pyro Shinyan. You'll have to hear me out on pyro Shinyan, because I wouldn't cover it if it wasn't worth talking about. Anyways, as a physical damage dealer, whether the main carry or the sub carry and support, Shinyan's best artifact set overall is a combination of two piece pale flame and two piece bloodstained for the unconditional 50% physical damage bonus. As a pyro unit, Shinyan already has access to more practical external attack buffs than usual thanks to her synergy with Bennett, so having multiplicative damage increases like this one is just generally favorable. And it'll allow you an easier time farming preferred artifact stats than a four piece set would, making it overall her baseline best artifact set as a physical unit. And speaking of pale flame, I do want to mention that four piece pale flame can actually come in close behind this combination because the pyro damage pulses on her level three shield do proc the four piece passive, but it's generally inconsistent to keep up with, especially if you don't have C2. So unless you already have an amazing four piece set of pale flame, there's no big reason to use this set over the aforementioned one. And that statement is even more true if you're running a burst support Shinyan rather than main DPS, because the four piece bonus becomes even more situational. So instead, the next artifact option I want to recommend is a combination of two piece emblem and then a two piece pale flame or bloodstained. Shinyan's burst is very important and the extra energy recharge from two piece emblem can actually provide Shinyan with enough energy to focus considerably less into energy recharge substats and more into things like crit damage, which in tandem with her C2 makes this combination potentially very competitive with two piece bloodstained, two piece pale flame. Under a few conditions. Number one, your Shinyan has to actually need that energy recharge. If she didn't need it in the first place, you're just cutting offensive stats and losing out on damage. And number two, your Shinyan has to be acting as a burst support. This set cuts the extra offensive stats in favor of higher burst uptime, so if you're wanting to use her as a main DPS, this set combination would basically be cutting into her total rotation damage, which as a main DPS comes from her burst and her attacks, not just primarily her burst. And by that same logic, no, four piece emblem is not an amazing set on Shinyan. Four piece emblem is best on characters that actually need the extra energy recharge incentive, and Shinyan doesn't really need that. Her best teammates, Bennett, Raiden, Fischl, etc., are all pretty good to very good at circulating energy for Shinyan, and Shinyan herself generates a respectable amount of particles from her skill. 
skill. So while she does need energy recharge, she doesn't need so much that Emblem becomes a powerful set for herself and her burst. And in terms of practical artifacts, that leaves you with one option, which is to use a two-piece combination of Bloodstain slash Pale Flame and then a two-piece Noblesse Oblige or a two-piece Attack set. The difference in damage output between these combinations is small enough that your artifact substats can generally be the difference between which ones are best for you. And although none of them come quite as high up as the first set I mentioned, two-piece Bloodstain, two-piece Pale Flame, they don't come in far behind it. So again, in this case, substats kind of make the set. And as for Pyro Shinyan, she's got a few options as well. Four Piece Lava Walkers is going to be her very best because most Pyro Shinyan teams are specifically mono pyro teams since she just benefits more practically from those teams, making this set a no brainer if you're willing to farm for it or you already have good pieces from all those great Crimson Witch pieces you never got. However, for similar reasons as the other emblem combination I mentioned for physical Shinyan, Two Piece Emblem, Two Piece Crimson Witch can come in somewhat close behind Four Piece Lava Walkers and then other Two Piece combinations like Two Piece Crimson Witch, Two Piece Attack Set, or Two Piece Emblem, Two Piece Attack Set can also come in at a decent damage output in some scenarios but they're all marginally worse than 4-piece Lava Walkers. And also for Pyro Shinyan, other options like 4-piece Crimson Witch do work for her if you're running vape teams, but not as well as they would for other Pyro Damage carries. Because Shinyan's Pyro Damage doesn't really benefit as noticeably from amp reactions, so the value of this set is already noticeably lower than 4-piece Lava Walkers, but it can be much lower with bad stats or teams that don't fully utilize the 4-piece passive. Finally, if you want to run a shield support Shinyan, which is kinda niche, you can use a 4-piece Tenacity, but for the exact same reasons why I wouldn't highly recommend 4-piece Pale Flame, I wouldn't really recommend going down this route for Shinyan, not only because its 4-piece passive is kind of difficult to maintain with her shield's pyro pulses, but also because by focusing full shield support Shinyan, you're gonna absolutely tank her damage potential, which is basically a huge opportunity cost. But anyways, finally to discuss Shinyan's somewhat difficult to understand artifact stats, you will always want to crit circlet, and with C2 and especially as a burst support, you can pretty much always just use crit damage over crit rate, just make sure your ratio is still stable if you plan on running her as a main DPS. She'll always want a physical damage goblet as a physical carry and a pyro damage goblet as a pyro carry and as for the sands it should almost always be attack percent. Mathematically there are very few scenarios in which a defense sands can outperform an attack sands even with c6 shinyan so unless you specifically want to bulk up her shield for whatever reason you'll almost always prefer attack percent. And if you plan on running shinyan as a shield support despite my mild advising against it forget everything I just said and slap full defense main stats on her or uh, two defense main stats and an er percent sands if you're having energy issues. And finally Finally, with substats, you'll generally want to prioritize energy recharge first at around 150% energy recharge on her, but that number can be a bit higher or a lot lower depending on your teams. Just make sure she can always cast her burst when it's ready. Then you're going to want to focus her crit ratio with crit rate and crit damage substats, putting a heavy emphasis on crit damage if she's at C2, and then after that you can enjoy attack percent substats as your third priority and defense percent substats come in fourth, because they are quite helpful but not necessarily top priority. Moving on to Shinyan's best weapons, she's actually been introduced to a few very powerful weapons since Inazuma's release, which are going to be the main focus of this section since there's already been extensive calculating and research on her other weapons, but I'll leave a link in the description to a few resources if you want more in-depth information on older weapon rankings. But for now, let's kick this off with one of her new weapons and officially one of her strongest weapons, Redhorn Stone Thresher. This weapon is quite literally a perfect match for Shinyan for its absurdly high crit damage, which allows her to make even better use of her C2 passive. Plus, Redhorn's weapon passive not only increases her defense, but it also gives her defense stats more value with a damage translation on her normal and charged attacks, thus alleviating a respectable amount of the awkwardness of her split scaling, which really has never been done before. Because of these things, Redhorn has dethroned Shinyan's other powerful 5-star claymores such as Song of Broken Pines, Wolf's Gravestone, Skyward Pride, and the Unforged as technically her second strongest claymore overall, coming in just a little bit behind an R5 Serpent Spine, but only because that weapon is disgusting. As for whether or not Redhorn actually makes defense sands more favorable than attack sands though, I don't actually know the specifics but if you're running Shinyan with attack buffers and external attack buffs, I'd assume Redhorn could at least make a defense sans competitive with an attack sans if it has competitive substats, but only on a main DPS Shinyan, because Redhorn's defense to damage translation doesn't count for her burst. Another of her newer weapons is Akumaru, which has proven itself to be a very powerful gacha 4 star mostly for its weapon passive, which increases the wielder's burst damage by a certain percent based on how many total energy points your team has. This means that, for example, with Shinyan's most popular team, Shinyan, Bennett, Fischl, and Rosaria, the team's total energy points equals 240, because they all cost 60. So at R5, Shinyan's burst would be gaining 60% bonus damage, making this weapon one of Shinyan's best 4-star weapons, especially when acting as a burst support, but that would require it to be at R5. At R1, that burst damage bonus would only be about 28.8%, which would make it generally only good for a burst support Shinyan, and it would still be beat out by other cheaper weapons such as Snowtomb Star Silver, Prototype Archaic, Lithic Blade, Luxurious Sea Lord, etc. 
etc. when she acts as a main DPS. But speaking of Luxurious Sea Lord, this was another completely free to play 4 star claymore that many players obtained during Genshin's anniversary event last year, one that is actually quite strong despite its uh, <laughs> design. <clears throat> the weapon provides a pretty low 454 base attack, but compensates nicely with a very high 55.1% attack bonus, which Shenyan makes pretty good use of as one of the highest base attack 4 stars in the game, and at R5, which is what most players who have this weapon will have it at. The weapon provides a hefty 24% burst damage bonus, and when her burst hits enemies, the claymore will summon a giant fish that deals 200% of her attack as AoE damage. This works so well with Shenyan because its cooldown perfectly lines up with her own burst cooldown, and as a pyro unit who commonly interacts with lots of passive external attack buffs, this adds a considerable amount of damage to the tuna's uh, splash. And in terms of its worth as opposed to Shenyang's other 4 star options, it will pretty much always be her best free to play 4 star as a burst support, beating out even an R5 Archaic Petra and a Snow Tomb Star Silver. But even as a main DPS, this weapon generally only falls behind when you compare it to an R5 Archaic Petra, which is much more costly to refine than Sea Lord anyways. So Luxurious Sea Lord has kinda set the standard for her free to play weapons as it performs respectably on a main DPS Shenyan, and except well on a burst support Shinyan. And so overall with her weapons, while very expensive new options like Redhorn do sit quite comfortably at the top as one of her strongest weapons, Shinyan has still enjoyed the introduction of potentially slightly less expensive weapons like Akumaru and completely free weapons such as Luxurious Sea Lord, both of which have the potential to exceed the performance of Shinyan's already established viable weapons by quite a large margin. And again, I'm gonna leave a link to some communities that have in-depth testing on Shinyan's older weapons if you still wanted to check those out. But this is a chart made by the Shinyan mains community in which they calculated a physical Shinyan team with all of her viable weapons in a specific main DPS rotation. So while this isn't necessarily the be-all end-all exact math behind her weapon options for every scenario, it is generally what you can expect to see from her weapons in terms of how they all compare to one another, with Redhorn sitting just above all of her other 5-star claymore options and Akumaru and Sea Lords sitting comfortably between Shinyan's free-to-play and gacha 4-star claymore options. And finally, for Pyro Shinyan, the weapon rankings are quite similar as you can see, with Redhorn still sitting atop her other best weapons, Akumaru gaining a bit more traction, and Sea Lord generally falling behind just a little bit. But again, take this chart with a grain of salt because it's only done with one rotation test. And for the big finale, we have to discuss Shinyan's best teams as of 2.8. So they can vary quite a bit since she works well as a main DPS for physical teams and pyro teams, and can act as a burst DPS slash support, so I'm gonna go over the most notable teams. The first and most popular of which being a traditional Shinyan physical team, in which you slot Shinyan, an electro unit, and a cryo unit for superconduct, and then a flex spot for the last slot, which is most commonly filled by Bennett for Pyro Resonance and large attack buffs for Shinyan. Keep in mind my Bennett is unfortunately at C6, and a good chunk of Shinyan's best physical damage teams require you to use Bennett and he cannot be at C6. But anyways, this is just a team template, but the team's Electro unit can be basically anyone since Superconduct is a lingering reaction and doesn't necessarily require insanely high Electro application. This means you can use characters like Raiden to significantly increase the team's damage output and buff Shinyan's burst damage while maintaining Superconduct and high energy circulation but you can also use characters like Fischl for generally similar reasons, and Fischl is amazing at circulating energy and providing her own high single target electro damage to the team for Shinyan. Kuki Shinobu can also fit this slot surprisingly well in certain scenarios considering how valuable she is as an electro unit and a healer all in one for Shinyan, but also her ability to use 4 piece tenacity and generate good energy with the help of Favonius sword makes her a pretty respectable character on this team. Other electro units like Kujo Sara can fit this team as well with the help of another electro battery to constantly output high burst damage whilst buffing Shinyan's attacks similarly to how Bennett can, which makes her a good flex character, but the last electro unit I wanted to mention is Beto. Beto essentially fills the role of a second carry for Shinyan because in multi-target scenarios her burst will contribute a very high amount of damage to Shinyan's team while also proccing superconduct for Shinyan's charge attacks to benefit from while they drive Beto's burst at a high speed. The two of them work really nicely together if you can manage Beto's energy well enough. For the cryo unit, while it can technically be anyone, your very best options are Rosaria for her team-wide crit rate bonuses, respectable cryo damage, and other physical damage supportive utility with high constellations, and Rosaria will steer this team towards a much more offensive focused team with fast rotations and aggressive but high risk playstyles, whereas your other cryo option, Diona, will still provide super conduct but will steer the team more towards a stable and safe playstyle with her amazing shielding and healing for Shinyan and her teammates. And although I did say Bennett is the most popular character to fill the fourth slot and he will by leaps and bounds provide the highest damage output for Shinyan, you can slot other characters like shielders in this slot for more comfortable gameplay with characters like Zhang Li, Diona,
Fiona if she wasn't already on the team, or Shieldbot Yanfei, which it's Shieldbot Yanfei is actually a surprisingly smooth team comp to run with. All in all, physical main DPS Shenyan has quite a few teammates to choose from that will more or less change up how she plays, but it's nice to see the introduction of characters like Sara and Kuki who do a pretty good job at shaking up and expanding Shenyan's versatility with team comping. And as for those of you that unfortunately see 60 or Bennett, I am referring to myself. All hope is not lost. In fact, Shenyan's mono pyro team can perform very competitively with her strongest physical damage teams, even despite her lack of innate pyro damage buffs. You'll almost exclusively want the team to be slotted by Shenyan, C6 Bennett, Xiangling, and an animal unit for Viridescent Venomer Shred. This team becomes significantly stronger if you have Kazuha or C6 Sucrose as the animal unit for their ability to straight up grant the team a pyro damage bonus, but it works with any animal shredder, and the idea of the team is to create a simple and very effective team style where everyone funnels their buffs to Shenyan so she can drive the team with her charged attacks for a very high pyro damage output. And I'm not gonna lie, it works even better than I thought it would, and although I do not advise C6ing your Bennett without doing research on exactly how it will change your account, I can't deny that this is a very fun and powerful way of playing Shenyan, and as much as I thought it would just feel like compensation for not being able to run Bennett with physical Shenyan, it actually ended up feeling like its own very capable team style for Shenyan. As for other teams that focus on burst DPS and support Shenyan, you can comfortably slot her in with virtually any physical damage dealers such as Kaya, Razor, or Yula, and especially more unconventional physical damage dealers like Fischl, Kukishinobu, etc. Shenyan's ability to provide physical damage bonuses and resistance shred with her A4 and C4 passives respectively, as well as her own high physical damage burst without taking up much field time, makes her a notable support for these kinds of characters. And yes, she can act as a shield bot for virtually any team if you wanted to run her at full defense with at least C2. Not that I really recommend doing that over her other playstyles, but it's an option. So all in all, over the course of Inazuma's lifespan, Shinyan has grown quite a bit stronger than where she once was, and although that isn't technically saying too terribly much, considering she's still an awkward split-scaling pyro unit at the end of the day, Hoyoverse has, whether intentionally or unintentionally, remedied and compensated for a considerable amount of her inherent weaknesses and nicheness with the addition of new weapons, sets, and characters. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, please leave a like and consider subscribing because it helps my channel out a bunch, and you should totally also follow me on Twitch because I'm streaming again. I'm back! Anyways, I gotta go. I, I forgot to finish the Hidden Strife event, so I'm gonna go do that. Goodbye, Shinyan lovers.